This is MSJ Chem. In this video, we'll be looking at the relationship between the reaction quotient Q, the equilibrium constant Kc, and direction of reaction. Let's start with a review. Here we have the expression for the reaction quotient Q and the equilibrium constant Kc for the above reaction, where A reacts with B to form C and D in the forward reaction, and in the reverse reaction, D and C react together to form A and B. The lowercase letters, they are the coefficients in the balanced equation. If we look at the expression for the reaction quotient Q and the equilibrium constant Kc, you can see that they are both the same. Both have the concentration of the product in the numerator raised to the power of the coefficient and the concentrations of the reactants in the denominator also raised to the power of the coefficient. The difference between the two is when you calculate the reaction quotient Q, you use non-equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and the products. And when you calculate the equilibrium constant Kc, you'll use equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and products. When the value of the reaction quotient Q is equal to the value for the equilibrium constant Kc, the reaction is at equilibrium. Next, we'll have a look at some examples where the value of Q is greater and less than the value of Kc. Next, we'll look at the reaction quotient Q and the direction of reaction. In this reaction, hydrogen and iodine react together to form hydrogen iodide. The value for the Kc, the equilibrium constant, is 49.5 at 440 degrees C. Let's say we calculate the value for the reaction quotient Q at a certain point in time, and we put in the concentration of the products raised to the coefficient and the concentrations of the reactants, and we get a value of 4.00. If we compare the value for the reaction quotient Q and the equilibrium constant Kc, we can determine in which direction the reaction will proceed, to the right, towards the products, or to the left, towards the reactants. If the value for Q is less than the value for Kc, which it is at this point in time, Q must increase, therefore the reaction will proceed to the right, in favour of the products, increasing the value of Q. Let's say we calculate the reaction quotient Q at a different point in time, and we get a value of 103. Once again, by comparing the value for the reaction quotient Q and the equilibrium constant Kc, we can determine in which direction the reaction will proceed. If Q is greater than Kc, which it is at this point in time, Q must decrease, therefore the reaction will proceed to the left in favour of the reactants, decreasing the value of Q. Let's end with a summary. If Q is greater than Kc, the reaction will proceed to the left in favour of the reactants, and Q will decrease. If Q is less than Kc, the reaction will proceed to the right in favour of the products, and Q will increase. If Q is equal to Kc, there will be no change because the reaction is at equilibrium. So that's all from this video. Don't forget to check the video description for a link to a practice worksheet.